Tom, there was a new overnight call between Israel and U.S. defense officials. What do we know of that phone call? Hey, good morning, Marty. Yeah, we know the uh, Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, spoke with the Defense Minister of Israel, reaffirming the United States' support uh, for the country and saying that the United States will be ready to respond if this war escalates even more from where it is now. And here at the White House, President Joe Biden has warned of, quote, severe consequences in response to these uh, missile launches by Iran. And at this hour, there's around 43,000 U.S. troops in the region ready to protect Israel. The attack appears to have been defeated and ineffective. And this is testament to Israeli military capability and U.S. military. I'm also, it's also a testament to intensive planning between the United States and Israel to anticipate and defend against the brazen attack we expected. Make no mistake, the United States is fully, fully, fully supportive of Israel. We also know President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris met inside the White House Situation Room after news of this missile attack came down, holding discussions and monitoring the situation. The president's team describing the attack as significant escalation and totally unacceptable, uh, with focus now turning, though, to how Israel could respond. Uh, the team saying Israel has a right to defend itself, but diplomacy will still be the goal. President Biden also saying he hopes to speak directly with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, we will also note the State Department has uh, the, not necessarily called for an evacuation of American people living in Lebanon just yet, but is uh, requesting sort of that they and pushing them to sort of leave the country for now with the concerns of the esc war escalating even more, telling them to find commercial means to get out of Lebanon. And Marty will also know, too, uh, that there's around half a million to 600,000 Americans living in Israel right now, which brings even more concern about this uh, war escalating even more, Marty. So you've got Americans living in the region and you've got U.S. troops serving in the region. What do we know about their whereabouts? Abouts and movements. Yeah, so first off, we know there were two different U.S. warships that actually fired around a dozen interceptors uh, to protect Israel during this uh, missile barrage uh, from Iran. But, uh, you know, there's several different warships in the region right now. I think there's around uh, 10 of them, according to the U.S. Naval Institute. Uh, five of them, uh, around five of them, are in the uh, eastern Mediterranean Sea. That's where those inter interceptors were fired from. Uh, five other warships are in the Red Sea, as well as an aircraft carrier uh, nearby. Also, this morning, the Pentagon saying a few thousand more troops will be moved to the Middle East, all to boost security in the region and defend Israel. In total, around 43,000 uh, U.S. Uh, soldiers are in the region, as I said earlier, as well as F-16 and F-22 fighter jets. A second aircraft carrier left uh, Virginia last week to head to the Mediterranean Sea and to be stationed in Europe, again, to be uh, potentially on call to help Israel if uh, need be. And that's expected to arrive in that area sometime next week, Marty. Yeah, a lot of moving parts. All right, Tom, thank you for that update. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.